Maybe. So the whole purpose of any top game is to be as heavy as possible so that you make the opponent on the bottom, no matter what size they are, deal with and have to manage your weight. Right? That's what you want. You want to, like I said, if John is 155 pounds, make me feel the full brunt of that 155 pounds because it's better than struggling under 80 pounds. Right? It's that much more that I have to contend with. And this will exhaust the person on the bottom. If you're smaller and your weight doesn't make a very significant impact because the person is that much bigger than you, at least put your full commitment there. But don't be afraid to move. Don't be afraid to transfer your position to something that's heavier or more secure. For example, moving from this standard side mount position where my back leg is long and I'm touching and I have the leg stretched and I put the weight in the hip, right? Moving from here to something that is just as heavy usually is only possible if I transfer to the forward Keisha Gatami, right? To the traditional Keisha Gatami. Because I'm just able to roll the hip and then when I switch the legs, I roll the hip back. Right? If I want to move to something else, perhaps I have to take a transitional route so that I can move to the knee and the belly. We used to learn that you put the thumb in the collar and then you hold the belt right, like this and you pin the guy by opposite corners of the gi to the ground and then you jump up and <laughs> land in the belly. And the problem is that as nice as that looks, the entire time I'm floating in the air on that knuckle push-up, is all the time he needs. It's more than enough time for him to open the foot, stretch the leg, and shrimp away. Right, and then just connect the knee and elbow. And I come down and I land on this. Turn a little bit to your side. But I land here and I get stuck. And he's able to put the knee in between and start to replace the guard. Because at this point he's got a frame here on my hips and he makes a frame with his hands. You'll see if we're side mounted, I would take this very classic approach to knee in the belly, where I hold the collar and hold the gi and then pin them to the ground and I jump up. Yes, see, he already blocked everything. And I can't get what I need. And the more I struggle and try to force it, the more I help him move away. And eventually he can even shrimp in half and come to his knees. Right? And everything is right here for him to sit up and put me on my back. Okay, let's go back. So we have to be careful how we transition to this, right? One way to transition to this is to move from this heavy position to something that's close to kneeling, right? But you want to trap the hip between the elbow and the knee here. So I'm going to relax the weight just for a moment until I can trap between the knee and the hip like this, right? Heavy on the diaphragm, but with the hips trapped in either direction between my elbow and hip. And what this does is it allows me to feel which way he's going to move. The head is low enough that the frame won't make much of a difference. And if it does and he stretches me up, that's great because that's when I put the knee. So I can just sort of hop inside that open space, right? I can hop inside that open space. The foot on the ground is going to be critical here for you uh, to gain balance when you first begin doing this, but ultimately what you'd like is for the foot, spin a little bit please, is for the foot to be off the ground. You don't want this because it's too much control for him and not enough weight for you. However, if I lift the toes up and just relax, now you see he's having a harder time breathing, right? So we'll relax a little bit. Don't just touch the shin to the stomach. You need to drop the full weight just like you were controlling the hips with the notch-to-notch -notch scenario before, now it's the shin-to-diaphragm scenario. Again, some people will turn the knee like this. That's a stylistic feature. It puts more pressure on the solar plexus. I can understand the benefits. I prefer to go straight across because I think it's harder to escape. And then again, we don't want to grab. We just want to touch. Right, the toes off the ground. This leg is away enough that he can't grab it underneath. Right, and maybe put it over his head or something and then I fall. Right. Anything can happen, so we have to be aware of our base at all times. Right now, we're used to making bases on the ground, and when we do a knee in the belly scenario, the base becomes his body. So we have to think about how we'd be attached to his body with our weight just as strongly as we'd be attached to the ground or the
with a mat with our weight, right? If we'd like to transition to the knee on the belly in a more uh, sort of safe, progressive way, you'll sometimes find yourself side mounted on your opponent or your training partner, and you'll switch the position, and you can almost sit next to him here a little bit, and you can hold the chest, maybe even put the hand on the ground for a moment, and you're just looking to slide the knee up into this area, right? Something like this. And when you do, now you're gonna put yourself forward and slide the knee, slide the knee back, look, along the diaphragm. And what happens is this entire area is covered as you move. The entire area is covered as you move. And because you're monitoring the hip on the other side with your hand on the ground, maybe even your elbow if you get low enough, then you're prepared for him if he begins to shrimp away, right? So you may be side mounted, doing the notched hip to hip scenario, and then he starts to make the frame. So you're gonna switch and maintain the weight the entire time. And now just before you put the knee in the belly, decide you wanna transition a knee and belly, you can drop the hips and slide back a little bit. Look, I put the hand on the chest, maybe the hand on the ground, the hand on the hip, but control the hips, know where they are. So this is not a grab, it's just a touch to monitor the space, right? And I get inside here like this, and now I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna drag the knee back this way and land, and then set my base, right? So what's really standing up in base, isn't it? When you stand up in base, here we are. Let's see, we're side mounted. And then I'm gonna switch to the Kenshi Gatami. And now I'm gonna sit down, right? I'd be like this, of course, first with the hips up. Then I'll sit down, my hands here, my elbows trapping the hip, and I'm just gonna move the knee and put it inside and then do this. And I'm in the knee and belly. And this is a very thorough way to move from a side mount to in the end belly position. There's not any space for him to put something in between his body and yours, like a frame or a knee or an elbow. So this is very nice, okay? Once the knee's in the belly, and we'll do these three things as part of the drill. Once the knee's in the belly and you're monitoring your foot so that your toes are off the ground and you're not touching the ground, you're just touching the chest only when you need to balance, you don't want to go over the center line, right? You don't want to go too high where he can buck you off like an Upa escape, right? And all of a sudden I lose everything. Be centered, crunch down close to him and just be ready to follow. So if he moves in a circle, we follow. And if he moves towards me, we follow. We try to make it as uncomfortable as possible, right? If the person on the bottom isn't wincing like John is, you're not doing it correctly. Even Giovanni at 130 pounds should be able to make me wince because he's got the weight properly distributed. This can only happen with time. It just takes time. You just have to spend time finding the way to put your optimum concentrated weight down in the smallest area possible. As you drill and drill and drill this, you'll become more comfortable and you'll get heavier and heavier. Actually, you'll be the same weight, but you'll feel heavier and heavier to your opponent because more and more of your weight will be concentrated where it needs to be, right? So that's the first thing we'll do. And then the second thing we'll do is we'll have maybe the, the partner push the knee a little bit. And when he does, we'll put the hands on the ground and look, point the knee at the ground, point the toe, and then switch the knee to the other side. That's first what's going to happen, right? Take my weight and put it on my hands briefly and flop the foot off. Now what we'd like is for the second leg to follow and replace the knee and the belly so that we end up on the other side, right? As we flop, look, we put this next to it and stretch the leg and right back to our original position. Right, so as soon as we feel some danger that we might be pushed off, we put the hand on the ground and we switch sides, okay? Make the opponent wins nicely, but you have to be able to work in a way that you can demonstrate the weight is effective. If you can't make the weight effective, when you're training in a live scenario, the weight will not be effective and you'll end up becoming tired because you're thinking that you'll have to grab him and hold him down, you'll exhaust yourself. So use your weight, right? Be mobile, but concentrate as much as you can in the smallest area and you'll be good to go. Just keep drilling it and you'll be fine. So the drill is, I'm on my back, 
John's next to me. He's a little heavy, right? And now he feels this frame, so he switches, and then he switches back down. Right, maybe here he'll briefly kneel, and he'll block my elbow, uh, my hip with his elbow, and then he'll push himself up and just shoot the knee in the open space. Good, and then he'll sit up, and he'll touch the chest, and he'll stretch the legs so I can't take it away from him. He makes sure his toes are off the ground, and this is the beginning of his simple transition in the on belly. So I'll move around in a circle a little bit for him so he can practice by following me. And now he'll go back to the side mounts. So really simple entry at first. Now we'll do a more complex but thorough entry where he gets framed from the side mount and he switches to the, to the Keisha Gatami, right? And now what happens? Remember you sit down a little bit and you're just gonna pull the knee inside so that it touches my rib cage and chest right here. Yes, and now what? You're gonna do the equivalent of standing up in base. So your knee should ride itself without leaving my body straight down until it locks onto my hips. Beautiful, great. And look, the leg is out so I can't grab it. So you adjust as you need to. Your hands are not too low. Your head's not too far over me, right? It's up tall, but you're low enough that you can control. The foot's off the ground, the toes are off the ground and you're heavy, right? And then if I push the knee, put the hands to the ground, flop one foot off and replace it with the other. Beautiful, right? And we'll just do this a couple times so you can practice switching. Nice, it has to be a simultaneous transition. Watch what happens if I push and he flops the foot and he doesn't replace it in time, go. Yes, right? We're out pretty easily. So make sure that to the same degree that you're removing this one, you're adding this leg. Yeah, okay? Nice. So the person on top, who's lighter, you can play a little more mobile of a game like this, and it can be good for you. Now that you have these positions, maybe sometimes you can lay flat, then you can switch to Keisha Gatami, then you can go to reverse Keisha Gatami, then you can start to mount, and in the midst of your mount, he blocks it so you go to the knee and the belly, and he pushes the knee and the belly, and you jump to the other side, and you switch and switch, and you just keep throwing positions. See, we think about always looking for submissions, but they're really... They don't matter. I mean, unless you're a competitor and you need to finish so that you can earn your medal or your trophy, and that's fine if you do that. That's not what we're focusing on here. We're focusing on what it means to really, really control and dominate another person with the technical weight application that's inherent to a, the subtlety of a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu system, right? So we're talking, about, we're talking about dominating and managing a person to the point of exhaustion. And essentially, you've got five, six things now that you can do from side now, where if you continually throw those things at the opponent, you'll wear them down. If not physically, mentally. And that's the beginning of the physical. And the physical is the beginning of the mental, so they work quite well together, okay? So the drill is lay flat, switch from standard side now to Keisha Gatami, go back, kneel quickly and stick the knee inside just to see what it's like, ride them around in a circle both ways, then go back down to standard side mount, switch to Keisha from the frame, and then do the knee drag, the standing up at base version of sitting into the knee on belly. And then you're gonna do the switch side to side. Okay, so those three things. Okay, good. Mm -hmm.